All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, we're going to be checking out Green Black Esho. Um, you know, I, I mentioned this leader in about uh, about five or so, five or six days ago on this channel where I mentioned, I showed off, I featured just like a single game of Green Black Esho. But someone in my comment section said, hey, I've got a list you might want to try. And I'm like, okay. You know, so he hopped on Discord. And by the way, if you're not on the Discord yet, by all means, hop on there, hang out with us. We have a good time on there. We talk about deck theory crafting. We talk about tournament results. We talk about everything, spoilers, you name it. Um, so please hop on there if you have not already. The, the information is in my About Me on my YouTube, or it's going to be in the description of the video. Uh, but back to, what, back to what I was saying, uh, the guy was like, hey, you know, I've got a list you can try out. I'm like, absolutely. So he hops on the Discord, sends me the list. I give it a try. And guys, it 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 slaps, right? It, it absolutely... It is very solid, guys. It's it's the the leader. Like I said when I last featured, I think I was mentioning how the deck's a little bit better than I thought it would be. I've been saying that a lot lately because you know a lot of these older leaders. It's not that they're just bad leaders or something. They're just not seeing much play because new meta decks are coming out. There's a little bit of power creep ish, issue with some of these, but guys, this this leader and the list we're going to be using today from uh, Con TCG. He's a new uh, YouTuber. I will link him in the comment section below, and I will uh, show you guys his uh, YouTube channel in just a moment. But he uh, linked me a list. I tried it out, and I was pleasantly surprised, guys. Now, just to give a full disclosure up front, transparency, um, this is going to be OP06 EV01. So if you're looking for something really cool, really fun to play in the last you know few weeks of OP06 for us over in the West, this leader might surprise you. It might be a little bit more fun than you'd expect it. So let's go ahead and dive into this, guys. Um, let me give you a quick layout. We are still going to deal with this in the same format as before where we check out some decks from the from the west and east. The most recent deck list that I could find on onepiecetopdecks.com featuring this leader, which, by the way, the only ones I found were from <laughs> OP04. So we'll have some big updates to talk about. We'll check out those decks from the west and from the east, and then we'll check out five games on the sim, and then we'll finish off with Con TCG's uh, Esho list. At the very end, I'll talk about it, um, and I'll talk about some revisions I think might make the deck even better. Right, so, so let's go from it, or let's tackle it from there, guys. So you know what you're getting into? Um, we'll probably do a little bit of spoilers at the end. I'll talk about some potential OP07 uh, cards you could put in the list, but it's mainly going to be OP06 and EP01. Okay, so let's dive into this, guys. So first up, let's talk about the leader. We've got a green-black dual-color 5,000 power 4-life leader, very standard, but it has two effects. Dawn times 1, your turn, give, give cost minus 1 to all of your opponent's characters. So that is a blanket minus one to everything, okay? Um, end of your turn, pay one, and then set up to one of your characters with a cost of five or less as active. So I've mentioned this before, this is pretty well known, but this allows you to be aggressive and defensive simultaneously, right? So blockers in this deck actually double over as like very solid aggressors where they can attack in, and then you can stand them up as long as they cost uh, five or less. So very, very nice um, leader effects. But one thing I will say before we before we get into this uh, first deck list is the reason I think this leader was overshadowed by something like Sakazuki and now Perona is notice Perona can give minus one. Like notice this effect here, the minus one that Isho gives. Perona can give that for free, right? Or it can choose to do the other option of, of tapping a leader. Like, you know, Isho stands a character and Perona rests a character, not a leader, a character. Um, but it, but it's free, right? But instead of having to choose, um, but, but this leader can do both, it's just it costs Dawn. Whereas with Perona, it's free, but you can only choose one, right? And, and I think, you know, Bandai or, or, or Cardass, whoever does their, um, you know, the actual ma making of the game and the, the development and everything, they're trying to figure out the perfect way to balance these dual-colored leaders. Having two effects, in, okay, this is just my opinion, what I'm about to say right here, Having two effects is the way forward, okay? Having two different effects and then choosing between the two. Because look what happened with Sakazuki, blue-black Sakazuki. You had two effects that you could use both of, and they were free, right? So it's like with Isho, they, they saw like, okay, this has potential having two effects. So they were like, all right, let's make it free. And then OP05, Sakazuki comes out, and it's like, oh, these are both free, and this leader ends up becoming very, very powerful. It wasn't just because of the leader effect, but I think you guys know what I'm saying. Uh, and then lastly, like in OP06, they were like, all right, let's try Perona, right? Where, where we give them two effects, and then we'll make them choose one. 
and we'll keep it free, but we'll make them choose one. And I think that is the way going forward. I think if they were to, to keep this game balanced moving forward, that is the way to do it. If it is a dual colored leader, the disadvantage of having four life is not justified by having access to two card pools because at the end of the day, you're going to have your set amount of 2K counters. You're going to have your set amount of, you know, removal, your set amount of this, your set amount of that. You know, all of that's going to be set whether you're in a mono color or dual color. That doesn't matter. So going down to four life is way, way too much of a disadvantage because that's one less attack you get to uh, ignore. That's one less card you get to draw from your life. But... If they're going to balance it, I think, you know, if they're going to balance it around four life, let me say it that way. If they're going to balance it around four life, I think this is the way going forward. Give the leader access to two free effects, but you can only use one per turn. That's just my personal opinion. Had to go off on a rant there. Sorry, guys. Okay, so now into the actual deck list itself. Uh, this one is from the East uh, all the way back June 27, so almost a year ago, right, guys? But we'll at least get an idea of what things were, you know, we'll get, a, get an idea of what they were using back then. Okay, let me put my glasses on. So I'm going to read through the deck list and we'll talk about it. So four Hinas, two Kuzans, four Borsalinos, two Sakazukis, two Smokers. This card, by the way, is a monster in a deck like this, but it's going to be hard to fit it in with, with some of the new cards. Uh, four Garp, four of the the three-cost Smoker, four Suru, two Isho, the eight-cost guy, four Brand New, four Sabo, four Izo, three X-Drake, three of the other X-Drake that buffs two Dillinger, this stands a dawn at the end of your turn, and then two of Tempest Kick Sky Slicers. Not a huge fan of this card, but it's also not horrible. The trigger is very solid. I think I even mentioned this before, or in a, rec a very recent video, I think it was with Garp. Why would you not run uh, Meteor Volcano over this card? I don't know. I I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Let's keep going. So one thing you need to understand is sequencing and like how things happen when they resolve at the same time and how the active player will get to choose how things resolve. So, for example, with Isho, notice his effect here is end of turn, pay one, and then set up to one of your characters with a cost of five or less as active. Okay, well, that's actually that's actually the reason Dillinger is in this deck. This is also an end of turn. So, when you end your turn, Dillinger and uh, Isho will both basically happen at the exact same time. And you're going to get to choose the order in which these happen. Of course, you're going to want to resolve Dillinger first, and then you're going to use that Dawn that, that the dawn that just became active to use with your leader's effect to stand up a character. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions or comments, suggestions, please never hesitate to put those in the comment section below. Okay, next up, so the four Hinas, this is just a great five cost 6k blocker. And remember, with our leader, we're trying to stand up a five cost character, so that's perfect. Uh, I don't remember if I, if I read the effects now. I, I had such a long rant at the beginning there. Uh, but remember, guys, dawn times one, minus one cost to all characters, and then pay one, stand up a five or less at the end of turn. So with Hina, that's perfect. You'll swing in for, for six, maybe a, maybe even attach one Dawn and swing for seven. And then at the end of your turn, you can stand this character back up. And now when they swing, you can block with it. It's a 6K blocker that also locks up a six cost. Okay, so this, this blocker is very strong. Read this if you do not know what it does. Uh, next up is Kuzan. This is one of those cards that everyone wished was a little better than it was. It just, and it's not that it's a bad card. Let me say that. It's not that this is a bad card. It's a 10 cost, 10,000 power character that gives everything on the board minus five cost and can KO a five or less when it comes into play because it, because it can KO a zero, but it sets everything down uh, by five. So it can hit a five or less as soon as it comes into play. Okay, but is that going to be impactful enough for you to survive the next turn, right? Because dropping a 10 Dawn card or a, a 10, you know, 10 Dawn's worth of, potential plays in just one card like this, it's hard to justify. Uh, so again, it's not that this is a bad card. And, and one more thing I have to say that just infuriates me to no end is the fact that this is a former Navy card. I understand why it's a former Navy card. I'm just saying, like, you know, judging by the picture and where this would have been in the story, uh, no spoilers, just understand, I, I know why it's a former Navy card, right? But it, 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 it infuriates me. They did not... Um, reword brand new to be able to grab back any card with navy in its types that would have made me much much happier but that's okay for borsalino we know what this card does if you do not know what this card does pause it and read it uh sakazuki here just I, I think this card is actually seeing a resurgence by the way as of op07 and probably going into op08 as well because popping a five or less five is like a magic number right now guys like five because you got you know the the, the three brothers they're all like five cost cards uh, and th there's just a lot of five cost and under cards in, in law, whether it be five cost kid, five cost queen, and all of their four cost and lower cards. 
this card just comes into play, pops the card, right? You know, you, you do trash a card, but that's okay. We'll talk about that in a second. You, tr you trash a card to KO one of theirs, and now you have a 7,000 power body on the board. 7,000 is a very awkward number for Law to deal with. Law wants to deal with 6,000 power and lower characters, so they have one card answers. This card, if they're not running something like um, Fire Fist or Gamma Knife or something like that, then they're going to have to use two cards to get rid of this. So that is a very, very strong card. Okay, next up is Smoker. I just absolutely love this card. The art, the the the, the composition, everything about this card is is attractive to my eye. Love those teals, the blacks, the whites. It just looks good. I don't know how else to say it. I can't I can't say enough good things about the way this card looks. As far as the card functions, five cost, seven thousand power. That is average. Like that, or excuse me, that is totally vanilla stats. It loses the one K counter, and then look at the look at the effect it gains. This character cannot be KO'd by card effects. Okay, so Rob Lucci. Um, you know, Gecko Moria. Now, you know, there are cards that do bottom deck in the game, of course, that get around this. But I'm just saying, guys, this card is very solid. And it's potentially double attacking. And you're standing it at the end of turn with your leader's effect. Very, very good card. Okay, next up is Garp. Uh, I've talked about this one before. Pause and read this if you don't know what it does. It's just a nice way to pop cards. And you can stand it up with your leader's effect in a turn. Mini, th this is the miniature version of Smoker, 3 cost 4k with a 1k counter. This card can also not be KO'd by, uh, by effects. And then whenever you attack, if there's a 0 cost in play, you're going to be swinging for 6k. So attach 1 Dawn, you're swinging for 7 with this card if you have a 0 or less in play. Or, or zero cost. if there's a 0 cost character in play. Okay, Suru, we all know what this card does. Isho, just a very solid card. I don't want to spend too much time on this, guys. Y'all know what all this stuff does for the most part. Some of these common cards, like brand new, we know what these do. Saba, we know what this does. I'm going to click, I'm clicking on, 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 excuse me, I'm clicking on all of them so you guys can pause the video and read them if you don't know what they do or if you need a refresher. Izo, absolute staple 2k counter in, in almost any deck that runs green. As funny as it is, I'm actually not running it today, but but it is it is something worth considering. Uh, X-Strike. This is Navy Searchable, guys. Five cost, 6,000 power, 1k counter, pops a four or less as long as it's rested. Well, with your leader's effect, you can pop a five or less, right? And I forgot to mention that with Sakazuki, with leader effect, you can pop a six or less. But the nice thing about X Drake is after you attack with him, he costs five. So you can stand him right up and you can search him with a brand new, solid, solid card. This card I'm not a fan of. I'm just going to tell you all right now. Four cost, 5k, 1k counter, dawn times one during your turn. While this character is rested, plus 1,000 power, for all your Marines, it should say Navy, and Supernova characters and leaders. This is just during your turn, so it's not even on your opponent's turn. I just, there's nothing. This card is impractical, and if it actually becomes a threat, if somehow you can just play this card on turn two and it survive, then, you know, then maybe you'll get some, some bonuses from it, but I don't even think so then. Uh, Dillinger, we talked about this card a little bit. It's an end of turn effect. It's a three cost 4K, 1K counter, Don Quixote Pirate searchable. End of turn, make, set one of your Don cards as active. Now, now, small spoiler, going into the future to OP08, or excuse me, OP07, excuse me, in OP07, we can easily replace this card with the, with the new 4-cost Uruj. Uruj has the exact same effect, but he's a 4-cost 5k, 1k counter blocker with that effect. So good stuff. And I already kind of talked about Tempest Kick Sky Slicer. I don't, I don't, I don't know why it's called that. Okay, so good stuff overall. This got first place back in the day at just like a little standard battle, a little store battle. Uh, good stuff. So let's move on to one more list. And then, we'll, and then I'll show you guys the list that I'm running uh, that, that I got from Con TCG. Okay, this is uh, another list here. Four Borsalino, two Kuzan. So he's, he's running the, the, Kuzan, the Kuzan that can draw a card over the 10-cost Kuzan. I like that better. I like that infinitely more better, especially especially now that we have, that we have access to Gecko Moria. This is an actual target we can snag. But we're going to talk about another option in the place of this. We'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, three Kobe, this is just a solid removal card. Three cost 4K that pops a three or less. So four or less with your leader, you know, and you can get this card back uh, with cards that have recursion. Uh, not in this deck, but but now now that we have access to them. Tashigi, just a 2K counter. Suru, Isha, we talked about this. Brand new, Sabo. This does, this, this does run the killer card. Uh, two cost, 2,000 power, 1K counter blocker. And Dawn times one when blocking. If you control three or more characters, draw a card on your block. So really not too bad. Uh, Trafalgar Law, um, just pause and read, read this if you need to know. I'll just tell you right now that it combos well. Uh, it combos well with Killer, combos well with Brand New, with Kobe. It does have quite a few decent targets, even Tashigi if you need a minus two or something, uh, and even uh, Bonnie if you're just trying to protect it. Uh, but then you can only play, you know, you can you can bounce back any card, any card, like no matter what the cost is, but you can play out a three-cost character from your hand from there. So, not too bad. 
uh, extra like we just talked about this. Bonnie's a Supernova ser Searcher. So this deck is running a good mixture of, of uh, uh, Supernova and Navy Searching. And then it's running two, the uh, 2k counter Apu right there and Punk Gibson. This is a classic here. Two cost 4k counter, rest a four or less. But the trigger, rest one of your opponent's characters. Doesn't matter what cost they are if you hit that trigger. Uh, it, yeah, if you hit this trigger, guys, it doesn't matter what cost they are. It, it's just pure value. Very, very strong if they have any characters left to attack with. And typically, people swing with their biggest characters last. So it is really good like that. Okay, now, how do we translate this deck list over to um, OP06, right? OP06, EB01. And first, I'm going to show you guys the deck list. Um, and, and, and actually, let me... Actually, yeah, I'll just leave it here. Um, because I will link down below my previous decks, you know, or not my previous decks, but my previous videos, and you can check those out if you want to. But this is the list that uh, Khan sent me. And let me mention him real quick, guys, before I forget. Uh, this is his site. He's, he just started up. He's just someone who hopped on my channel. He's trying to start up a, um, a YouTube, put out content. And, you know, go check out his stuff, guys. Uh, please go check out his, his site, and he'll give you the full rundown on why every card is in the deck. I'm not going to go through I'm going to do a quick overview like I normally do, but if you want to know what the author's thinking about why each card is in here, this is a good thing to do. Sub subscribe kind of thing, you know, like his video, subscribe to him, help him out, guys, help him get started. I always love to help out people in the community. That's a big thing for me. Um, for those who do not know, I, I like to try to give back to the community in whatever ways I can. That's why if you go to my channel, one thing I used to do all the time is have like a community spotlight video, you know, uh, where I'm trying to just find one real quick. Uh, I, I always talk about random stuff on here. You know, this was a community spotlight where we, where we talk about, you know, um, uh, Moonlight TCG, my sponsor. You know, big shout out to them. And of course, even other stuff, just even smaller um, smaller names in the community, but they're still names in the community. Like here's the bat suit. I, I get questions on this one all the time. I did a community spotlight on how do you set up the One Piece TCG sim? People see my videos, they're like, how do you do the sim? Now I just reference them straight to this video. You know what I mean? So that way they can uh, get started from there. Um, I, I also used to do it with people who would do the cars. I'm sorry, guys. I don't want to go through all these. Uh, Minitopia did a spotlight on them one time. And, of course, whenever whenever someone has, like, a really uh, crazy deck list, like Black, Yellow, Linlin, I like to put them on there. That's one of my favorite things to do is to feature people like that. Uh, as long as they're interested in doing a, uh, you know, an interview type thing. Uh, but, but all kinds of stuff like that, guys. Uh, I'm trying to find one. I probably just could. Okay. how? <laughs> you ready for this, guys? I could have just typed in community and it would have brought all of them up. I'm, I'm, I'm learning, right? I'm learning. But here we go. Atakai TCG, Kaizoku cards, uh, Davidson TCG as well right here. Definitely check all those guys out if you're looking for custom cards. And, you know, in this case now, talking about um, Khan, he's he's just the new kid on the block kind of thing. You know what I mean? And there, I'm sure there's new kids popping up every day in this. You can't. It's hard to keep up with all of them. But this list he had... That shows a lot of potential. Really cool stuff there. Uh, seems like a really cool guy. Like I said, I, I've, I've talked to him on uh, Discord. His, he, he seems like a really cool uh, laid-back guy. And this is the list we're going to be playing on today's sim. And I'm, I'll, be, I'll actually, I'm going to save going over this till the end of the video. But here's the actual deck list we're using for the video. It's OP06, EB01 legal. Okay? So, you know, by all means, please, you know, try this out at your locals or on the sim. Have fun with it. And let's get into these games. Okay, here we go. First game up is an L. And like I said, guys, I will go over the deck list at the end, so don't worry. Okay. We got the we got the volume off. We got the speed at 2x, and we are good to go. First match here, guys, against a very good deck, in L. And and here's the thing, like while the game's like playing out, I've got it in 2x speed. We're just waiting for my opponent to make their, their move. They're probably deciding whether or not they want to attack or not. They play out Sanji. Uh, I've got bad news for him. That's an easy turn two pop for me on the draw because of Brook and the leader effect. Swing six. You don't want to take... Um, okay, real quick, hear me out. Make sure Are we on 2x speed? Yeah, we are. All right, hear me out real quick. You don't want to take life too greedily against... What's his name? Against Anel. But beca because they play Gadatsu and Yamato, you don't want to stay too high in life either. I would say two... In this deck, in this deck in particular, excuse me, in this matchup, two life is a nice, nice spot to stay at where you need to start playing blockers and countering out effectively and all that. But I would try to go down to two so that way your, your Brook is no longer in range of your Gadatsus. Who cares if he pops brand new, right? That doesn't really matter. Okay, so going down to two life is not bad at all. 
Okay, swing six at him. He doesn't know what's coming yet. Minus one cost to Asanji. Play out Brook. Minus one more. Pop him because now he's zero. I've got a card on the board now. He is at five dawn. This is a very, very obvious Gadatsu play for him. If he has it, and he does. Now, right here, I am going to 1k counter out of this because he cannot pop by four cost cards. And, uh, you know, I have ways to get back my, uh, my, my um, what's his name? My, my Brook. Brook is very nice in this deck because of Rebecca and because of Gecko Moria. So right here, I just play out a blocker. I don't, um, oh, excuse me, I swing for six. Okay, he takes, he's down to two. And now I've got a 6k blocker that cannot be KO'd this turn, but this is a seven dawn turn for my opponent. Um, it depends on what in, what Enel list people are running these days, but now there's anything, they could play like a six cost Pero Sparrow, a seven cost um, Compote, a seven cost Enel, a seven cost Linlin. -Lin. There's actually quite a few different plays they have on seven now. Okay, and he's got six Dawn open. He's going to play out Sanji and keep two Dawn active. Okay, so so right away, when, when I see two Dawn active, I'm like, okay, what is he playing? And I hit him with Isho, and I think I see what he was playing. He was playing the new uh, Flaming Emperor King, uh, or whatever the actual technical name for it is. So I swing for five, and then I'm going to pass turn back to him. Uh, after swinging six, when he took that, I was like, you know what? He probably shouldn't have taken that under any circumstance. So I'm going to swing six into his Gadatsu. He gives me the Sanji blocker. I will take that because I have I have decent counter power in hand. You know, I've got two, four, six, plus three. I've got 9K in counter in hand. Um, excuse me. And remember what I was saying when we were when we were looking through the cards. Laboon probably naturally takes the place of, uh, what's his name, Kuzan in this kind of deck. Maybe not. We'll have to see because it's not Navy searchable. Um, and, it, and it doesn't have the ability to draw a card on play, but still, I think it, there's something to be said there. Okay, he's swinging in for eight at my 6K blocker. I don't think I... I'm actually happy he did that instead of swinging at my face because I would have really been in trouble if he swung at my face there. I'd had to drop two 2Ks. So right here, attach one to Isho. Now his entire board is minus three cost for the turn. Swing 10 into seven. I know he's struggling with counter power, cause, or at least he was earlier. Oh, now he has two Dawn open. That's why he was struggling with counter power. He actually has the events open. Okay, and that was pretty nice. He saved his ace right there. But I still have ways around this, right? He's at four Dawn. I swing six into his Gadatsu. He gives it to me. I play out Rebecca, playing out uh, the new Brook. Comboing his five cost character. That is a very powerful combination there, guys. If you have the eight cost Isho, yeah, excuse me, the eight cost Isho, with one Dawn on it, and the leader with one Dawn, you're giving minus four to the entire board. So I was able to pop anything and everything I wanted that turn. You know what I mean? At least at least what was on the board. Now what does he do? I've got two blockers. I stood my blocker up in a turn after swinging for seven with it, with my leader's effect. And now what is he going to do? I'm going to gladly play out, or excuse me, counter out with my, uh, what's her name, my, my Rebecca there. And now, let's see, now he's going to swing for seven, but where? The answer is... Okay, that, I guess it didn't matter where it was because I was going to block out no matter what and give him a 2k counter. He has two Dawn active. I know he's probably playing with another event. I don't know which event he's running. It could be the uh, Ikaku Sovereignty or the Flame Emperor one. But I do want this card gone. I do not want that card, uh, Enel, on the board anymore. Um, so I play out another Isho, and here's what I do here. So first I'm going to attack into it, I believe. Let me see something here. Oh no, excuse me, attack minus pop it. Now, does he want to save that card? Well, I'm just swinging for it life. Like, this, he can't even take life from this to cycle. That's okay, because I wanted just I, I really just wanted to establish another 9k body. So I'm going to swing 5 at life. He gives me a 1k counter. Okay, I'm should have passed now. You gave me a counter. You did not get to cycle any life. And now I've got two, 2 k bo or two 9k bodies coming in next turn, and you have one life. So he's in a lot of trouble here. Let's see what he does. I don't know what is in his hand, but it probably doesn't matter, right? It probably just doesn't matter because I have a blocker. Um, swinging for 11, it looks like, four Dawn active. Swinging 11 into, yeah, into Brook, sure, you can have that. I don't need to remove anything anyway anymore. And now I'm just going to swing nine. Let's see what he has. Okay. He might have another event, because remember, that, that Ikaku Sovereignty is a two-cost 5k counter. Look at that. So that was a one-card answer to a 9k attack. Pretty solid. Swing nine into, into five. Takes it. I'm going to swing nine into him because guess what? If this doesn't go through, I can still stand my blocker up at the end of the turn. At the end of the turn, I can stand that blocker up. Okay, <laughs> that's nice that he got a Kikinojo, but it just simply doesn't matter. I swing for 11 here just in case he has a Kaku Sovereignty and a 2K. So that way I can stand up my blocker and still be able to survive next turn. He only had the zero cost 3K event and a 2K. Close, but no cigar. Uh, not too bad though. That, that Anelis was pretty spicy. It was pretty good. 
Okay, next up, let me uh, see where we're at over here. Okay, that was versus Anel. This next one is versus Katakuri. Had some pretty good games, guys. Had some pretty good games with this deck. Uh, 2x. There we go. How funny. L last turn, I was like flooded with Isho's. Right, I played double Isho. This turn, I'm flooded with 8 cost Gecko Morias. So, and the deck does run 3 and 3 of each. I think going forward, I would like 4 Geckos and then maybe 2 Isho's. That's just me personally. Even though I understand how strong Isho is with this leader, I totally understand that. S still, it's almost like Gecko Moria is just absolutely disgusting. You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I go four and three. It's hard to say. Uh, so, okay. So I swing in for five here. I've got, I still got four Dawn. I'm going to attach one to my leader, pop his, um, his Nami. I was actually hoping he would counter out of that to get cards out of hand because I didn't want him to hit a trigger. He could ask to pop my, my Brook, but I'm not too worried about that. I, I counter out with my Borsalino because I know I'm going to get that back later with my, um, with my Gecko Moria. That's the whole idea there. Okay. So let's see what we have here. I'm going to swing for five. Let's see what he does. Again, I'm trying to get cards out of his hand. I don't want him to draw any more cards from his life, right? I don't want him getting any potential triggers. Okay. Counters out for one. Now, right here, I'm actually going to swing for five more with my um, with my brand new. And now play out Rebecca, getting back the brook, playing out the brook, popping the one cost. And now my board is filling up. That That's why I think, guys, hear me out. All of the old leaders that used to run black in, in them at all, like whether it be black green, black red, you know, black blue only really has Rebecca and um, and uh, Sakazuki. But, I mean, any kind of black combination, black yellow, this new synergy of Gecko Moria plus Rebecca plus Brook, it is, it, it, I, I feel like it's going to make every single deck viable that runs black if you just run a specific package of those three cards. That's it. That's 12 cards. So you still have like 80% of your deck left to build. Uh, but then you saw that that core package that you can build around that just makes them so strong. Okay, so right here I play out the I play I, I, excuse me, and I didn't even use the combo right there because I couldn't pop anything. So I play out the Gecko Moria, which gives me back a um, um, my Borsalino that I countered out with earlier, and my brand new, which let me draw cards. He attacked into it, so it worked as a blocker as well. Just super high value. That one Gecko Moria turn right there did all of that. Swing for seven. I'm going to 2k counter out with my 6k blocker. I, hey, I guess I guess I'll just play out. Well, actually, right here I'm looking if I have enough targets to do. But hey, I can just play out another Gecko Moria. How, how many of these eight cost um, categories do you have, right? So swing six into six. Let's see what he's got. He takes that. So I'm like, oh, okay, six more there, and now play out Gecko Moria, playing out Rebecca and Brandu. Brandu searches up uh, either Kobe or Hina. I can't get the Brandu right because Brandu can't search Brandu. Um, so I get back Kobe. Then I play out um, the Brook and pass turn. So there you go, guys. That turn right there, I put four bodies on the board. I put four bodies on the board. One's a blocker, one was a searcher. The other is going to be a potential KO later in the game. Okay, swinging. I would have swung whatever into my Brook. I would have swung uh, eight into Brook and then um, this eight right here, or nine, excuse me, into Brook as well. Because that card I'm going to eat up his board with, right? Like, like he, he has to uh, find a way to, to deal with that. Or potentially, right? It depends on what I have, and, and then I just <laughs> I just drew. I already had the ability to go Rebecca and bring back a Hina to go minus four. Now now I'm trying to do the math properly because I definitely can get rid of this um, of this Lin Lin. I'm just trying to do it in the correct way. So minus four there. Okay, then I'm gonna have to play out the other Hina from hand. I'm just got the. I was trying to see if I could get a, a quick swing in with uh, brand new, but there's no point because I could do it this way. So swing for five with Brook, popping the Lin Lin, swing five with leader, and now in a turn, I'll stand up my Brook. You can't even attack it now. You have to pop it with some type of removal. Okay, he plays out another Lin Lin. Last time I gave him life because I needed to establish my board. Now I'm okay with trashing a life. It was a Rebecca. That's fine anyway if I get a, if I get a, a Gekka Moria later in the game. Okay, swing seven. Let's see what he does. Checking someone's life. I don't know which one. I'm just going to give him the blocker here. He has two Dawn active. What is he going to do with that? Maybe he has a Shirahoshi or a Sanji or something like that, or, or a um, one-cost, uh, what's his name, uh, or what's her name, Pudding. Okay, Thunderbolt. So it actually pops one of my Hinas with a Thunderbolt. Not my, does not pop my, my Brook. Hey, t uh, you know, he's got his own game plan here. Teach their own. <clears throat> I just don't think that's the, I don't think that's the play personally. But I guess, hey, the more I think about it, I don't have anything to reduce cost uh, right now in my hand. So he's kind of safe here. 
But watch what I do. So I attach one Dawn to the Brook earlier, swing five, swing five with Hina, swing five with my leader. And then he hit me with a Beige Trigger, so I couldn't swing with my Gecko. And now I just play out two blockers that cannot be KO'd. My whole board cannot be KO'd by effects. And now it's your turn, bud. I don't know what the right answer is here for my opponent. Um, maybe going... Probably just going for my board and, and just sitting behind blockers or gaining a life with Lin Lin and hoping for the best triggers in the world. I have no idea because I can tell you one thing, this is not a good position to be in. <laughs> I can tell you that much right now because you can't, it's not like you can, um, you know, 200 million volts Amaru, my, my Sabo, and then go for lethal by swinging it all out because I still have a blocker. You know what I mean? I still I have, excuse me, I have two blockers and he doesn't know my hand, but I've got 6K counter in hand. So, and then whatever my last life is, whatever my last life is. So I don't know. He's just thinking right now, guys, I don't think this is BM or anything. I think he's literally just like, what am I supposed to do in this situation? And like what we've seen, all right, he's just loading up guys, load up 12. You didn't have to load anything up and you could have that card. Yep. You can have him. And here we go. Like I said, this is probably his best play was to go for board like this, but he is in such a bad situation right now. It almost doesn't matter. Yep, you can have that card because I'm just going to swing with every one of these. We'll go nine first because that's going to be every card out of your hand or your last life. Let's see what he gets. Okay, he he gets a 200 million volt tomorrow to go, to go up a life. So now I'm going to swing seven since he only has one card left in hand. And now it's just load everything on leader. I'll swing for 13 just in case, whatever, so we can stand up, you know, if some kind of miracle happens. I, I don't know. It, there was no reason. I could have just swung for nine. Okay, so that was a good game. Next one. Next up, we have um, Isho versus Uda, Green Uda. Now, here is one thing I will say, guys. Uh, no spoilers or anything like that. It's just, you know, Green Uda does not have removal. I mean, it has uh, backlight or blacklight, whatever it's called. It's, it's, it's either backlight or blacklight. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but that, that event, that is their only form of removal. Well, if I'm standing up my characters that matter, well, he doesn't have removal. You know what I mean? Then he has to double up the removal. Okay, right here. So I'm like, okay, I'm, you have no characters on the board? Yeah, I'm just going to play out Brooke because I know you don't have removal. Um, and if my opponent does not have removal, and I can get cards down like Isho, cards like um, Laboon, cards like, you know, uh, Brooke like I have down right now, <clears throat> it, it, it can get pretty ugly pretty quickly. So right here, I'm trying to figure out what I need to do for attacks. I'm going to swing for six. I'm going to play out Kobe. And... I think you guys can see where this game's going just like from the beginning, right? How are they going to play anything this game and survive? Um, if I had to guess, this must be a hard, hard counter to Uda. So he swings for six, swings for six again because of I'm invincible. I give him both 2K counters because the only way I can lose this game is if he starts going crazy with like multiple attacks on the leader. I counted out of two of them. So I'm feeling very good about that. I still have three life. I'm going to swing five. Okay. Okay. And then I'm just going to establish other cards here. Um, looking back, I think what I should have established, I think I established Sabo here. I think I should have put down a Laboon. Okay, yep, I play out Sabo because I'm going to stand up my Brook at the end of turn. I, I, I pitch one of my Brooks because I can get it back with, um, what's her name, with Rebecca if I need it. Uh, and I already have another, uh, another Laboon. So right here he fills out the board. He's probably thinking, okay, this is pretty solid, right? And, and it is. It's not. It's, this is not a bad play, right? Swing six, he's gaining cards. I'm, uh, I, I did take that one, but right here, I'm like, you know what? If I establish Isho right now, this game's probably over, and check this out. I will swing, or excuse me, I will pop two of his characters, one with my with my um, Kobe and the other with Brooke, and then I'm just going to pass turn. I can't swing because he has a 7K blocker. I, I don't want to get greedy with it. I want to keep my blocker up in case I need to protect one of these little guys because I only have two, uh, one 2K in hand. He takes this turn to establish a Eustace Kid. That is very interesting, okay? That is a very interesting play there. I guess his thought pattern, like his thought process must be, okay, well, I can just, you know, okay, right there, that was a mistake. I should have blocked with my Sabo and gave him a 1K, and then if he swings 7 with his, with his um, uh, what's his name, with his Luffy, I can 2K counter out of that then. Okay. So... Or I, could, I don't even think I had a 1K counter out because it was just it was for it was for five right it was for five and a four yeah I could have just blocked easily that's okay I'm gonna swing ten into Eustace Kid here attach one Dawn swing ten into him you got to give me two cards now and 
you know, by the way, I hate to break this to him, but I'm still just going to pop this card, right? Laboon. So I considered popping the, the Luffy here just so I could swing everything still into the uh, Eustace Kid. But I was like, you know what? This is just safer. I don't want to give him any extra cards anyway. So pop that guy. He's just going to let that bounce. And then pop this guy with Kobe. And you, guys, y'all see where this game's going. So now it swings seven. Let's see what he gets. No trigger. Swing eight. And now I have one Dawn left to stand up my blocker in a turn. That effect is so, so good, guys, in certain situations. Against green, it's just good, period. And if I had to pick one deck that just hard counters Uda, I don't know if any deck hard counters Uda more than this one does. Because it, it literally doesn't keep my characters tapped. You don't run at enough removal in Uda to deal with my characters. And I have cards that can just recurringly, every turn, KO a card. It's just so good. So he swung for 8 into, or what did he swing for? Excuse me, he swung for 12, I think, into my Isho. Nope, you cannot have my Isho. Sorry, bud. He plays out a 2K counter in a situation like this. It is over. You're right, he has no Dawn left. He can only swing 5. He doesn't even swing. I think he just conceded, basically. Uh, right here, I'm like, uh, okay, I'm just going to pop that. And now we're just going to swing in here. Um, I can't decide how I want to do this because I'm like, okay, I, I should just go for game, by the way. But I was trying to figure out the best way to like KO his board simultaneously. I should have KO'd the, the, the um, I don't know. I wanted to, I was going to take out his entire board this turn. But then after he countered out, I was like, wait a minute. I can just win the game right here. So that was just me not paying attention. So I'll swing 10. It's impossible to get out of this with two cards in hand with no Dawn active. And then I'll just swing for 15 or 13 or whatever's, whatever's left on the leader. 13. GG. Okay, good stuff there. That was a fun one. Like I said, if they don't have removal to get rid of your guys that have removal and they keep standing up, it is a bad, bad situation for them. Okay, next up we got Sabo. Let me go full screen. Speed, 2x. Uh, this game, this was, this was a close, close game, guys. A little bit of a spoiler there. And I didn't think it was going to be because watch how this game starts off. I'm like, okay, go ahead. I play out Brook. Because I know Red, Yellow, Sabo doesn't really focus on removal. It's more about just beating your opponent down. Um, but but watch what happens here, guys. So right there, he plays out Kika Nojo. I've got four life because I aggressively countered out so that he could not get the benefits of a Kika Nojo from his life. And it's like, well, now I'm actually going to play out Suru. Minus two, minus one for my leader, minus one from Brook. I'm swinging for five. And I'm popping that card right there. Okay. Now right here, I'm going to swing for seven in a turn. Stand at my Brook. And this game looks like it's over, right? Like, like if, if you're just looking at this game right now, it looks like it's just over. Then he does this. Swing seven with ace. Put ace back. Play ace back out. Plus two to the leader. Swing seven more with ace. I don't have any two counters in hand. Swing eight. I'm like, you know, Lord have mercy, right? Good, goodness gracious, I'm in trouble now, right? Um, this is a bad situation to be in, right? This is a very, very bad situation to be in. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we got to make the best of it. We got to try and get through this. I play out a blocker. I play out another blocker. And I only swung for six there. I'm going to pass turn. I'm going to bunker down. Because I also don't have any cost reduction. Right? I don't have any cost reduction. Okay. So right here he's going to play out Garp. And let's see what he gets. I, hopefully I show what he gets. I think he got a Luffy, by the way. I'm pretty sure he, he, he drew into the five cost unblockable Luffy. He did. And I know that, and that's why I blocked out that, like, um, you know, <laughs> I blocked out that that aggressively with my with my Doflamingo. I take that one, I take this, or excuse me, I can't take this, and I, I counter out of this with a 1K. All right, my turn. Now, right here, I am up against the ropes. Excuse me, he did not get, um, he did not get Luffy here. I think he gets it next turn, because, like, he does a search and reveals it. Okay, so right here, I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm about to just lose this game. Maybe he did get it. Maybe he did get it right there. But but what I was thinking was like, okay, I'm, I'm about to lose this game if I can't establish this here. You know, so, so swing five at him. If he gets back the ace, it is what it is. But I'm going to play out some blockers. I'm going to play out some blockers here and go full defense. Play this, play that. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to need that Isho for the rest of the game. And that, that little four cost Kobe, this is not not his time, right? This is not his time. So swing for five into him. See what he gives me. He has a he has one cost active, or he has one card active. So he might have a radical beam. That's that's what's going through my head right now. He probably has a radical beam. Okay, so swing five, he takes it. Now I know he has two rushers. 
and I am going to stand at my blocker. Your turn. Now, I think this is where he reveals that he gets a Luffy. Oh, oh, he did. I'm sorry. So he did get Luffy last turn. And guess what? He swings for 10, leaving one Dawn active. I have exactly enough, exactly enough to get out of, well, um, I would have enough to get out of his full 11K swing. But we got through it. Praise the Lord. We were able to take that one out. He swings nine into me. I block out there. He, or swings nine into my uh, my guy over there. I block out of it. And now I'm just going to give him, a, he swing, swings for six. I'm going to block out and go to seven. So I have no other opportunity here but to win the game. Like, or excuse me, I have no other chance here to to survive I, because I don't know if he has another Luffy in hand. If he has another Luffy in hand, I have one card. I, I, I just lose. So it, it is time to go everything at this guy's face. And I mean everything. And here's where you have to start doing some math. Is it better to swing for like seven, 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 nine, or something like that? You know, or something along those lines? Or is it better to go seven, nine, eleven? And I think I choose to go seven, nine, eleven. Because my because I'm also thinking right here, if this does not hit, I lose. Yeah, so it was seven, nine, ten, and look at his hand, guys. He is bricked. But if I had not, if I had not gone for um for game right there, and he had this this Luffy was still in his life. I lose the game, right? Because first of all, he has a Luffy in hand. He can pull it out of his life with a swing for like 13K on Blockable or whatever it is. Okay. But then he, even if I didn't, even if he didn't have that, he can only swing, he'd be able to swing here as well and I lose. So that was one of those situations. A little bit lucky he was bricked up like this, but that is also, you know, speaking from experience, that is how this deck is. It, it plays very, very bricked up like that. Okay. Last game. This one is against Red Black Garp. You know, you, you gotta love playing on the sim, going against other other jank decks like what you're running. Or I shouldn't say janky, but like decks, you know, decks that are not meta. Other off-meta decks. It's one of my favorite things to do. Let me make sure we're doing good on time. Okay, yeah, we're doing good. And right here, I know what he's playing because he's probably running a list that's very similar to mine because it's just a good list. You know what I mean? And, and a lot of people, you know, one thing that does happen whenever people like me or Joey or uh, Los Fiends, whenever we put a deck out, you know, like this, like a, an off meta deck, sometimes people want to try it out on, on the, um, on the sim. And I totally respect that. It makes, it makes sense to me. And it's a lot of fun. Okay. So right here, I do need to, I, I really want to pop this Nami, but I think I should have done it a little bit differently. So I swing five here. Watch what happens. He's just going to block out, I think. Or she's, well, I guess he couldn't block out. If he, excuse me, if he would have blocked out there, I would have swung eight into his Borsalino and stood my, my guy up at the end of turn. So that was very smart of him. I swing six, play out the brand new to, to, to draw a, I think it was a Rosinante, stand my guy up in a turn, and now it's your turn. Now, we know what Brook's running these days. He attached one there, so now my Brook's down to uh, two. He's probably going to attach one more Dawn. There he goes. Now my Brook's down to a, a one, and here comes his Brook. So this is very much a mirror match, if you think about it. Because I bet probably like 70, 60 to 75% of our cards are the exact same. And, um, and that's not a bad thing. But with the ability to stand up my cards and he does not have that ability, he's going to have to rely on something red offers in the form of like rushers or something. Like if he's running the uh, five cost Luffy rusher. Right here. Play out um, Rebecca. Get back my, um, I don't remember which one I got back. But I either got back the Hina or the Brook. Played out both of them, and, and then took care of it from there. And now I've got a pretty decent board, but this is his 8 Dawn turn. Everyone knows how strong 8 Dawn turns are if you're running black, because there's your Gecko Moria. Okay, but he attaches two, so I know he doesn't have the uh, Gecko Moria this turn, maybe next turn. So he pops my Brook with that, and this that's that's how this the, the new meta is for black. For any decks that are running black, the new meta is like, play Brook, let them KO it, bring back Brook, you guys, I had a 3k counter out. I had a 3k counter out of that broke with all 1k's. Or out of that 7k attack with all... At that point, I think he should have swung with his, um, with his Borsalino. But, but he had other plans. Uh, that, that Garp's going to be a little bit of an issue, but I actually think that the, uh, the Brook is a bigger issue because it can hit one bigger than the, than the, uh, than the, uh, Garp can. And with Garp, you actually have to attach, you know, well, I don't know. They, they probably hit about the same because of the leader effect. But I'd rather get the, um, I'd rather get the, uh, the Brook off the board first. Uh, but I might not be able to because I only have so much Dawn. Yeah, I, I actually can't. So I'm going to head, I'm going to go ahead and get back my Brook to pop his um, Garp and get back my Rosa Dante. And my Rosa Dante, uh, it can only protect my, it, it can actually only protect my Hina right now because it can only, it can only save another rested character. 
Okay, so something to remember whenever you're playing um, Brook. And looking back, I think I probably should have played them backwards. I think I should have played it where Brook came into play tapped, and then my Rosanante came into play untapped. So that way I could save it in that way, or block with my Rebecca to save it. So that that was actually probably a small play mistake, the more I think about it. But that's okay. That's why we play these, you know, try these decks out and try to, you know, get better and better. Okay, so he did an Ice Age on my Gecko Moria. Plays out his Gecko Moria, getting back um, Brook and Garp. He is going for full removal. Swings four into my... See, and now he can swing right into my Rosanante, and, and I can't save anything now. Everything would have been different there. Everything would have been different there if I had done it the other way around with my Gecko Moria. He popped my Gecko Moria with his Brook interaction with the Gecko and the Ice Age. And now I'm, I'm up against the ropes, but it's definitely not over yet. Because I can attack I can attack into everything on his board for the most part. Okay. So right here, I do need to play out this in a, in a specific way. I need to play out the 8-cost card. I don't get the on-play effects because my opponent only has 4 cards. It only works when they have 6 or more. But I can attach 1 Dawn to my guy now. And here's, here's my logic. I'm going to swing 4 into him, popping his active Brook. That's important. You want to get the active one because otherwise you have no other way to deal with it. I'm swinging 4 into 3. Does he want to give me a 2k to save that? The answer is no. Now I'm going to swing 5 into 4. Again, it's like, please give me your 2k counters because I have additional attacks now. Swing 5 into face. If he takes this, it kind of tells me he had 0 counter. He did have a brook to... Or excuse me, no he didn't. He, he took that, and then I'm going to stand my guy up the end of turn. Now it's going to come down to, do you have any way of getting rid of my, um, my Isho? When he pops my Rebecca like that and loads up for uh, to swing for 8... I'm thinking, okay, he's trying to probably finish the game out now. Like, I don't actually know. He could still go for board. Excuse me. So, so swing here. Yep. Very nice. I got to let that go. Nine at face. I can't block that, right? Not, not with what was in my hand. So this turn for me is going to be a blocker turn, right? So this turn, I have, I have no other choice but to, but to do blockers. Um, I could have tried to go for a game here. Uh, that's a real option. But he left two Dawn active. So I'd rather swing five at face to be safe. And now, right here, I feel like, okay, looking back, okay, this would be Radical Beam plus something else to get out of this. I think I should have gone for game here. I think I should have gone 11 to face, which would have been two Dawn and then 11 to face and then 12 to face. But he had double Rad Beam. So I would have been pretty disappointed, <laughs> right? I'd have been pretty disappointed. So right here, instead of uh, playing out, I could play out a blocker or I could try to take out this card. But, okay, there's a reason I swung into him like that, guys. Look at this real quick. Look at this real quick. I'm sorry, guys. This is kind of like an educational moment. I'm swinging 13 into 9. Now watch how he gets out of this. Rad beam, rad beam. One rad beam puts him at 13K. So I know he doesn't have another 1K or 2K counter in hand because you would you would never do that. You know what I mean? You would never go rad beam, rad beam to get out of an attack where you only needed one and then a 1K counter. So I'm like, you know what? Unless you just did the most insane bluff of all time, I'm just going to get rid of this card on the board. Um, I still think it would have probably been smarter to play out a blocker here. and Like I could have played out Borsalino and stood up my brook. But instead, I'm like, you know what? No, there's no way in the world that you just did that and had a 2K in hand. There's just no way. So uh, I, I smash into the Gekka Mori. I take it out. He plays out uh, Borsalino. He plays out Brook to, to pop my Brook. Feels bad. Um, and right here, I have to get rid of these cards, right? There is no other option. He swings it for five. I 1K counter out with a Sabo. This is a good game, right? Like This game is like very, very close. Even though I have a hand advantage right now, he has the board currently, and I need to take this back. And with him having access to red, I know that um, that Luffy could be around the corner at any time. Okay, so right here. I think swinging for five is a little crazy, but I know exactly what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to play out my blockers and everything. Uh, so right here, I'm going to swing... I think I swing 10 into the brook. I, I, I mean, obviously, the, uh, the Borsalino. Okay, and now I can attach one there. My His guy's at a four. I'm going to play out a 2K counter here to pop his guy. That T-Bone card can pop a two or less, guys. That's a four. That's a five cost 5K with a 2K counter that can do that. Does Nami, gets Monkey D. Luffy, and I'm like, okay, unfortunately you did that first. Like, instead of like, because if he had swung nine first, I probably would have taken it because I had a blocker, and then he could have played out the, well, actually, no, excuse me. There, there's just like no way around it. 
So uh, he's, he's going to swing for nine. I know he has Luffy, so I'm just going to block out. He's going to play Luffy. It's his only chance, and I do have enough. Uh, uh, well, actually, I had one life, so that's just game. Okay, swing seven because he has one card. Swing nine, GG. And the guy said GG in chat too. Really good sport about it. Uh, that was a crazy game. Uh, th these two decks are actually very solid and they're very similar as well. It's like uh, there's not a lot of great cards red. You know, let me say it like this. Excuse me. Every card I play in this deck or that, that con put in this deck because remember I am using someone else's list. Let me bring that up now. Notice every card in this deck is a black card with the exception of Rosinante. So like I think going forward like even garp can mess around with this list like think of it like that even garp can mess around with this version of the list and just take out the rosinantes and instead put in like three luffy's or three rad beams or three of whatever flavor of card you want to try out but other than that this this um this deck was uh playing very very well uh one thing i want to say there were a few revisions that i would make to the deck right away um i was not a huge fan of kobe um i would probably the the kobe and the Laboon. I would probably go down one Laboon, one Laboon and two Kobe's. And from there, I'm thinking instead of Laboon, I would rather have in two of these Helmepos. Those can go Those can go well with my Gecko, uh, bringing back cards with my Gecko. And I'm still running brand new, so I can search it up, you know, throughout the game. And then, like, maybe even, like, a single Marine Ford. I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. Like, and maybe, actually, instead of... No, yeah, I feel like one Marine Ford would just be really nice. But notice how this deck was built as well. Th there are almost no bricks in this deck. The only bricks there are, actually, you know what, maybe that's what we do. Hear me out, guys. Maybe we get rid of the Hinas and we replace them with Helmepos. Like, let me go up one more Helmepo, and then we could run two stages. Because in that situation, we got rid of two cards with no counters, which were the Hinas, and we put in uh, two Marine Fords in the place of them. Then... Um, we took out three k cards with 1k counters and replaced them with Helmepo. I feel like that's the natural progression of this deck. You know, I mean, you know, your, your mileage may vary, right? It's, it, it's, it's up to you. Another, like, small revision is I would probably even consider going down a Gecko, excuse me, a Sabo and going up a Rosinante. Because in my experience, I only want one Sabo a game. And then if I really need a blocker, it's going to be Rebecca into Sabo where now they can't be KO'd. You know what I mean? Whereas if if we go in with uh, Rosinante, that's another target for our for, excuse me for our Gecko Moria late game, and from there. Uh, but again, this this is just my own personal opinion on this, so I'm just gonna put it in for now, just to kind of show you guys where where I'm thinking about going with the deck. And if you're like, no, Sabo's the best card ever, well, just keep it. You know, uh, keep it in the deck. Maybe you go down one Borsalino instead. You know, I don't know. But this is Navy searchable, right? And and that is that is really nice. And with Isho, I think I'm going down one of those for a uh, Gecko Morium. There we go. And this is like the list where I think that I'll, like the direction that I want to go with it going forward. But again, I just wanted to highlight this deck that someone put in the, in the Discord, this guy Khan. And I wanted to give him a big shout out because, man, this this list was a lot of fun. And and here's the thing, guys. One thing you got to remember is I'm just a human, right? I know, you know, spoiler warning, I'm just a human. And, uh... When it comes to putting out these different deck lists, I put out a video every single day. I don't get to dive into these decks fully. I don't get to go like as as deep into each one of these as I'd like to. But when you guys can, because you know sometimes, like for example, this was this guy's favorite deck. Another deck that I featured a while back with, with this guy named Snickers. I, I featured a blue green Rosinante um, or green blue Rosinante deck that I got a lot of my inspiration from his list. You know what I mean? Because that's his favorite deck. My favorite deck is Black Yellow Linlin. Y'all know that, right? Uh, so it's hard for me to get all this, like, you know, super in-depth guides on these with what limited knowledge I have. So when someone comes in and refines the list, like, guys, I'm just I'm just saying, like, this list, the way it is built, it had answers against pretty much everything that I was playing against. I didn't go against any Rob Lucci's guys, or excuse me, this was OP06. I didn't go against any Sakazuki's. There's just not many on the ladder right now, or on the, on the sim, however you want to say it. Uh, Red Purple Law I didn't run into. I don't, I don't think I ran into a single one of those. But guys, try it out and y'all tell me how it goes. Because yes, it does deal with bottom decking, which hurts our cards like Brook. But Brook is at that annoying number, 4,000 power. So they have to use a card to get rid of this card. They have to use a card to get rid of it. And okay, if they get rid of this one, we still have cards like Isho. Or excuse me, like uh, Kobe that we can combo with our leader and everything. And we're standing up cards at the end of the turn. We're running tons of blockers in Rebecca, in Sabo, in Borsalino. We just have all these super high quality blockers. We have some big threats for late game. 
it's just a real you know it, it the deck seems like it, it was pretty well fine-tuned like the, the you know that uh this guy con did a very good job with it all right, that's it. I'm done rambling. Uh, y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. And please check out his uh, site. Like I said, guys, I will have that link down in the comment section below as well. Um, but, you know, please check him out. And a uh, big shout out to all my all my uh, patrons, all the people that help the channel, people that are just, even people who are just viewing, subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, all that stuff, guys. Please keep it coming. Give us your ideas down in the comment section below. I love reading through people's comments to see what people have to say. Um, tomorrow is the pretty much the one year anniversary of the channel i will have a video for tomorrow let me show you guys something real quick um whereas patrons there we go move that off uh i just want to show you guys one more time and you know you know one more time big shout out to con and i wanted to show y'all if you look on here i put out a video every day and see how it says 364 uh videos it'll say 365 today but that's because one time uh not that long ago i had to put out two videos in one day uh, this one right here, technical difficulties, right next to the Anel video. I had some technical difficulties, so I put these out in the same day because I didn't think this Anel video was ever going to post. So technically speaking, tomorrow will be my 365th actual video. But it gets even more complicated because look at this, guys. My channel came out on um, May 25th right here. And tomorrow, at the time you're recording this, will be May 24th right yeah so, so it's like wait a minute well then how does that work out this year was a leap year so it would have been 366 days for the entire year but tomorrow i'm still going to act like that was the one year cycle because it was a 365 day period so tomorrow going to have a video lined up for y'all it's going to be a fun one uh nothing too crazy don't get your hopes up I'm not trying to get anybody's hopes up but uh, i am going to be showing off a mat that will be for sale soon not yet i'll have more details on that tomorrow and we will also like a play mat of course and then I will also be uh, doing some games on the sim. It's going to be a pretty chill uh, video for tomorrow. But, you know, big thanks to all you guys. You know, you see the stats right here. This is after one year, uh, one year's worth of growth, guys. 5.85, 5.85K subs, almost a million views after one year. Uh, and these are like, like unique views, I believe they're called. I think they're unique views. And that's after one year, guys. So I just want to say thank you all so much, guys. Y'all are what's making this, you know, this channel keep going. And y'all are... You know, the more people that are watching this channel and the more support I get, the closer I can to make, it's the closer I can, I can get closer. <laughs> there we go. I can get closer to making this into like a full-time thing because for those who are not aware, I'm a teacher, but I want to make this my last year of teaching. Uh, I teach art at a high school level and that job is fine. I can always go back to that. that. That's not an issue, but I'd rather do this, right? This is something I really enjoy and this is something that apparently has a lot of traction right now and i feel like i'm being like led in this direction right because of how things are going so again i just want to say thank you to everybody who views this channel who supports me even if it is just viewing even if it is just like liking or subscribing whether it be you know donating the way every every which way y'all y'all support me helps and, and i really do appreciate it all right guys i'm done please not forget to like subscribe if you've not already and yeah until next time peace <laughs>